Hello Capricorn friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Capricorn January 2022 Astrology Must Knows Horoscope Forecast. Go to AnnieHelpsYou.com for the one-stop place to see all the free goodies that I make for you each month and there are a lot of them, including a new perk when you sign up for my free email newsletter list where you can run a free birth chart so that you can use the information in my videos more. I'm so excited about this, I've been working on it for a while. So you can see all that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also, if you'd like to see free courses including Unleash Your Money Magnet, How to Make More Money, LoomLife.com, L-U-M-E, Life.com. That's my online school. So this video is for you. If Capricorn is your sun or your moon like me, or your rising or your Venus like me, or your Mars or Mercury or whatever you're watching for, any cap placement, what we're going to talk about here is actually going to be part of your astrological picture. The next must know is that if you're a very late degree cap, we'll just put you all in like the January 15th or later or like 23 degrees through the rest of the sign. I also urge you to watch my Aquarius report because you later late degree people, you have a more, you're cuspy, very cuspy and you have a more complex read. So you'll need the cap and the Aquarius um, reports to see your bigger picture. Okay, so what are our must knows in this new month and this new year? First of all, happy new year. There has been a lot of difficult years we've pushed through behind us um, and I'm hoping that this year is better. So we're starting out here with, with pretty much a lot more softness than we just stepped out of. So big must know there is that Saturn, um, Uranus uh, conflict, still a little bit ripe in the cosmos, but every month that we go into 2022, we're getting further away from that until the last clash at the end of the year. So hopefully things will be lightening from that perspective. I do have a separate video on Saturn square Uranus that you can watch to go into the details of that, but I wanted to mention it as a must know that a lot of the things that were heating up towards the end of the year there, now that we're at the new year, they're starting to dissipate. Okay, so the next big must know is that although we can see some important afterquakes from the November and December eclipses here in January, we're out of the heat of the eclipse season. And that is a great relief because as you might have come to notice if you've been tracking these here with me, is that during eclipse season, which is the few months around the eclipses, it's really stressful. Even if there are positive changes, the unknown and the foreboding and this the change is in the air and not knowing what's going on and feeling like you have your finger stuck in an electric socket, some of that should really be um, shifting now. And that is definitely something to celebrate. Something else that's a must know that we have to celebrate is that we have more, by quite a bit, more sweet aspects and salty ones this month. And whenever that happens, it does factor in as one of the layers of how we might experience this month. So if you want a write-up of all of the sweet and salty aspects, their dates, what you can expect from them delivered into your inbox one month early, that is another perk that you get when you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. All right, so the next must know is that we are in Mercury retrograde this month. So we were going to look at Mercury retrograde from a couple of key points um, that will be true for everyone. We're going to look at a couple of must knows from the signs that Mercury will be retrograde in, including Capricorn is going to dip back into there. So that's very relevant for caps. We're also going to look at the house or field of experience that that transit is moving through because that will bring down more layers of relevance for you as Capricorns. Okay, so that's how we're going to break up our little Mercury uh, retrograde discussion. So first big must know about Mercury retrograde, pretty much very difficult time to plan anything and any plans that you make, they're likely to change or get called into question. They could wind up working out, but a lot of things get called into question or kind of have this shakiness about them where you're like, oh, I don't really know. So what's the best advice then? Try to not plan anything. If it's unavoidable, try to plan in pencil and let everyone know involved that there's a good chance it could change and to just be open to those possibilities, okay? And one of the big must knows about Mercury Retrograde that I love, love, love is that the more you can leave yourself less scheduled, the more you leave room for last minute magic, okay? This is something I've come to see about retrogrades. As you know, I've been a student and a teacher of retrogrades. I have a book that's in on the shelf in all major booksellers all over the world that features retrogrades. This is one of my topics of great study and teaching. And I've come to see that 
in this retrograde time, one of the things I love most about it is that it doesn't, um, in this overscheduled, over busy world that we have created, it doesn't leave room for that reveling in the moment, you know, taking time to smell the flowers and taking an opportunity when you're walking down the street and someone says, hey, you want to have lunch? You know, even if it's just a friend or whatever the situation is, just an opportunity right before you. Oh, can't, don't have time, right? Is what we usually say. And this retrograde, maybe you can make some shifts and leave yourself open to the magic that is always awake and alive through synchronicity, but you'll have more opportunities to take advantage of it if you leave more time in your schedule, okay? So that's a big must know. So basically you're going to expect confusion and uncertainty and difficulty in planning for the future. So if you're in a retrograde and you're trying to plan for the future, those plans are also a little bit more dicey. It's a good time to research though, you know, research, um, get some things, you know, in pencil is kind of like a plan or an idea or looking at options and possibilities, but not necessarily for trying to activate too much unless it's short term. All right, so that's one of the other things you must know about Mercury Retrograde. If you're doing something short term or if it's flexible, like let's say you wanna take a class because Mercury Retrograde does lend itself to awesome study and does lend itself to, like, like I said, research and education. So let's say you wanna take a class and that's a, a longer term class. As long as you have some flexibility woven into it, like it's go at your own pace, you don't you know, have to worry about deadlines, um, you know, the flexibility of the payments you could afford, things like that make it, you know, a match for this time. Okay, so basically Mercury is going retrograde January 14th through February 3rd. There are pre and post shadow transit periods before and after the retrograde that have just as much of the Mercury retrograde energy in those times as the actual retrograde. Okay, so starting from the last couple of days of December um, until January 14th is the pre shadow transit and then from February 3rd through February 23rd is the post shadow transit okay so now you know that basically trying things on without permanent commitment is great now or doing things with flexibility like we said okay so Venus is in retrograde and Venus is going direct Venus rules love and beauty and money and design and your appearance and your self-esteem. So it covers a lot of ground. So I am going to give you some highlights here, but I do recommend that you watch my Venus retrograde video because it covers so much ground and it's so long. So basically the Venus retrograde starts December 19th, goes through January 29th, but the pre-shadow period starts November 18th and the post-shadow period goes from January 29th through March 2nd. So we've got a very long period of time where you're going to have your Venus goggles on. Venus goggles mean you might not be seeing clearly or for the long term in love, beauty, money, your appearance. So biggest, best advice as a must know, it's fine to experiment. And not only is it fine to experiment, it's encouraged to experiment in a way that doesn't jeopardize what you already have, all right? And in a way that's easily fixable. So let's say, you are not sure about things in your relationship. An example of this would be maybe take some space, but don't end the relationship or start seeing other people per se, or doing anything unless that's part of your agreement, whatever, but don't do anything that closes the door basically, because by the time Venus goes direct, I've had this happen so many times where someone has written to me or posted or said something like, I wanna leave my partner and, and I've said, okay, Maybe, maybe it's the right move. Now, of course, one caveat to that is if you're in danger, you have to leave, regardless of the transit, don't worry. You know, I mean, obviously that, that is a, an exception, but if that's not your situation. You might be questioning things at this time, but it doesn't have the strong energy for trying to end something permanently, okay? Just always imagine those tides. I always talk about the astrological tides. When we have a retrograde, and now we have two, Venus and, and Mercury. If you try to throw a message in a bottle out to sea, the tides are gonna bring it back to the shore. And that goes with a decision that you make. If you try to make a decision to end a relationship, it's things tend to haunt you if you make a decision because you don't have the certainty you need for the completion. So that's, that's something to know. 
So if you can consider things, take some space, don't make a permanent decision, do some inner work, go to couples therapy, things like that, um, that would be better. And the same goes with design projects. You will have a strong urge to spruce things up in your life, to improve things, to improve your appearance, and it's perfectly fine to do those things. It's well indicated, in fact. As long as they're low stakes, you're not stretching yourself financially beyond what you can afford, and that they're easily fixable. Is it a time to cut off all of your hair? I don't think so, because the chances are that when the Venus goggles get off, you're going to say, ah, where's my hair? It's going to take so long to grow back. But you experiment with wearing a wig to see how it feels with short hair, or wearing a hairstyle where it feels like your hair is shorter, you know, where you have it up pinned up in a certain way, or to get a henna tattoo instead of a real one. Cosmetic surgeries of any kind that are permanent or that could be botched are very strongly not indicated at this time. Just basically the, what I'm telling you is the same. If it's easily fixable and the chance of it going wrong is none, you know, like let's say you just try a new beauty lotion or whatever, that is low stakes, something affordable, it's very different than a surgery which is permanent, okay? So you wanna stay to the flexible, the easily changed types of things where you can experiment freely without committing. Okay, so now all of that being said, since the tides are coming in during this time because of the Venus and the Mercury retrograde, we do have a time when the tides are going to be going out. So if you are a cappy that has a big business launch, has a big relationship decision, an engagement, wedding, something else that you wanna plan, there's beautiful energy for pushing forward in long-term ways from around February 23rd through around April 27th. That's going to be our big next open window. That period of time is actually going to feel more like a new year than this time does. In some ways you will feel like, wow, okay, new year, feel it, clean slate. A lot of that's actually coming from the wrapping up of the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle. A lot of karma is being burnt off and a lot of new steps are being taken. But because we're starting the new year with both Venus and Mercury retrograde, there is that energy of like uncertainty of not like this big new thing because you know certain things are still in progress and getting wrapped up. But if you're looking for your big new year, your big push, your big time for your launches, for your big decisions, for anything you have to do that's more permanent, end of February at the end of April is gonna be your window. And plus we'll have a lot of Aries energy in that time, which will be perfect for pushing forward. Okay, so we've got lots of energy in Capricorn, and this is especially notable for you all, so let's break this down. First thing I wanna talk about is birthdays. So happy birthday to most of the Capricorn placements, since most of you will have your birthdays this month. Happy birthday to those of you who also are having your um, time in December. I love birthdays. Birthdays are magical times when we get to have the universe be extra receptive to our desires. That's what birthday wishes are about. So make sure that you take advantage of your birthday wishes. You can search for Annie Botticelli making wishes come true. I also talk about this a lot in my book, Planetology. If you're liking wanting to use astrological power periods and other things to help you create more of what you want in your life, that's one of my areas of expertise. So you can check that out, but you can see some in, the, in that video as well. But basically you want to write your wishes down, say them out loud and feel them as if they've already come true, okay? That is very, very big. So another big must know about birthday time is that the weeks before your birthday can get a little stressy because your 12th house is getting flooded. Your 12th house in the chart is the one before the new birth, the rebirth, the crossing over into the new, the new zone and the new cycle. And that brings up your fears and your you know, doubts and addictions sometimes and old patterns. Sometimes we have to get very, very well acquainted again with the things we don't want to see what we do want, okay? So if you see some of that coming up before your birthday time, and this is even true for those of you who have other um, cat placements, because when the sun crosses over whatever your placement is, there's a rebirth in that area of your life as well. So you know, it's a good time for setting intentions even if it's not your birthday. All right, so then we've got the continuous Venus retrograde in Capricorn. Okay, so we talked quite a bit about the Venus retrograde transit, but now I just wanna drill down a little bit and talk about the fact that it's in Capricorn. Okay, so from 26 degrees back to 11 degrees is what the retrograde is. Every cap is going to be profoundly affected by this retrograde. 
but those of you who have placements between 11 and 26 degrees will be even more affected because it will tie into those placements in your chart. When we get a mathematical connection from a transit, it affects us more personally. So the 11 to 26 degree people are basically all of the January born with the exception of the last couple of days of the sign. But basically the January born or anyone from 11 to 26 degrees if you know your placements, which now you can because when you sign up for my free email newsletter, now you can access running the free birth chart. I've been working on this for a long time. So I am so happy because for almost a decade, I have been giving you details like this that drill down into the degree. Um, and now, I'm, now I can offer you this free resource to be able to use the other free things I do for you more. So, um, so that's happening. Now, Venus in Capricorn is going to bring up a lot of topics about your work and your money. We talked about the money aspect of it, uh, but your work aspect. So definitely people are going to be reconsidering what the heck they're doing with their lives. Okay, and you are going to be feeling this extra strong, all caps will, even if you're not in the January zone, the December and January, all of you. So this is a good time again to start educating yourself for a move. Um, to add some temporary things or bridge things to some things you're already doing. If you need a job and a job comes to you, take the job. I often have people say, can I take a job during Venus retrograde? If you need a job, take it, whenever it is. But one thing to know about that is that sometimes it's shorter term than you think it will be. And sometimes it's a bridge job and that's fine. So let's say your dream job isn't happening yet, but you get this other job, maybe this job can bridge you to that job. Or maybe you're trying to make a new business work, but you're not quite ready to launch, or it's not quite working out financially yet, and you need to take a job in the meantime. It increases the odds that that will be more of a short-term position, which doesn't have to be a bad thing, it just is. All right, so I also wanted to mention that those of you who are at the end of the Capricorn placement, so we'll say the last six days so like around January 17th through the rest of the sign, um, or 24 degrees through the rest of the sign, you all will also be getting direct um, crossovers from Mercury. Okay, and so again, that just means that it will be more personal for you, the transit, because it's connecting into your placement. Okay, so a lot of things having to do with your redefinition of yourself, your physical body, your health, your, um, your systems that you use for your wellness and your daily you know, exercise and things like that. This also has to do with your image um, and not just like the Venus retrograde things we talked about with how you look, but also like what you are or what you call yourself or how people know you. You're reconsidering, a lot of you are really reconsidering, do you wanna be known as an engineer? Maybe you wanna write kids books instead, or maybe you're right, you write kids books and you wanna be an engineer, whatever it is. There is a lot of this kind of playing in the possibilities of what you could be and what you want to be and what aligns most with what you wanna create for yourself. So it's a great time for research, it's a great time for experimentation, um, and it's a great time to start preparing for big moves for the future by working on things in the backdrop. It's not quite time for the big launches, but it doesn't mean that you can't say yes to an opportunity that comes to you. Because sometimes opportunities that come, um, you know, do have a tilt to the past that you don't realize. You know, like, well, I'm not gonna go into examples of this, but, but just know if you have an opportunity come to you, you don't have to worry about taking it, especially if it's something that's low stakes, it's not boxing out other options, etc. Okay, so something else that's noteworthy is that we are going to still have energy in Sagittarius, and this has been for an extended period of time because between Venus, like the end of last year, the last few months of 2021, we had Venus in Sag, then we had the Sun and Mercury in Sag, of course we had the New Moon in Sag, we had the Eclipse in Sag. Now, then we had Mars in Sag, and now we still have Mars in Sag. So that brings about um, a lot of scatteredness, a lot of extra busyness, a lot of vacillating in options. A lot of times Capricorns are pretty certain about things. I have quite a bit of Capricorn in my um, chart, and I bless the universe, thank you for it every day because I have so much Sagittarius and I have those times when I get wrapped up in all of the possibilities, right? But the Capricorn parts of me are the ones that show up every month, year after year, right? We 
tend to be pretty clear in certain aspects of purpose and things that we need to be doing. So that is an absolute blessing. But don't feel worried if that usual certainty that you have has been cast into to doubt this month because it's kind of by design. You're meant to be questioning things at this time. And if you know that you're meant to be questioning them, you could have a different experience of the questioning process and see it like an exploration instead of so that something's wrong. You know, I know that the Capricorn parts of me, if I feel unsure about something, I start to feel like something's wrong because I usually have so much certainty with a lot of things. But I don't want you to feel like there's necessarily something wrong just because you're not sure. You're supposed to be diving into possibilities, asking about, um, asking yourself deep questions that will push you for your future. And you will have this big window to start to act here pretty soon, starting at the end of February, where you can bring some of your research or the experimentation or the things that you've been playing with kind of out into the, the more visible place. Okay, so let's see what else I wanted to talk about there. Um, the last thing is that Jupiter is recently in Pisces, okay? And this is actually a very um, good thing for Capricorn because for the whole time that Jupiter's there, it's going to be making nice aspects for Cap. It was a little bit more awkward in um, the Aquarian placement that it's been in pretty much for all of 2021. So that that is a must know. The next must know is that this transit through Pisces is going to be very brief. It's going to blaze through Pisces between the end of December and like the spring, you know, April, May is going to just go into Aries and that then it will be in Aries for a little while, then it will retrograde into the end degrees of Pisces. But for the most part, the Pisces story for Jupiter is going to be very short and very powerful and linked in very positively for Capricorn placements. And this is going to accentuate for you your mobility, your creativity, writing projects, communication, travel. Um, so you've got a, a push there over the next months in those arenas. If you've been wanting to write or wanting to create or anything with editing, um, anything like that, this is a really great time. So if you have unfinished projects or ideas that you've had from the past, this January and most of February is a good time to start putting the finishing touches on those things. First of all, so you can get them ready to bring out. Second of all, so you can clear out your field for new possibilities. It's kind of like a big karmic wrap up of things that have been, that you've started or that, you know, they're just sort of lagging, you know, and interfering with your vitality. This is a time when you can wrap them up, be ready to send them off on their way here pretty soon. And then you have a lot of open energies for as Jupiter moves into Aries. Okay, so I've given you lots of information to help you make the most of this new month and this new year. If you would like even more information, I have a lot more resources for you. Go to AnnieHelpsYou.com or you can click on the link below this video. If you click on the little more button with the arrow, the notes will be revealed and the direct link is there. And if you would love to be an astrologer as your profession or just earn a little bit of money on the side from your love of astrology or just help yourself and your friends and your family, Without charging, you will love my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. As you can see from all of the things that I do, I'm a teacher, I love to teach astrology, and if you think I put a lot into my free resources, you should see what goes into this crazy comprehensive course, Becoming a Professional Astrologer, which you can see at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. This link is also in the notes underneath the video. I also have a book, I have multiple books, but the book that is most about astrology is called Planetology, and you can see that at any major booksellers, and it's actually on the shelf at all major booksellers. I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!